here today with the director of Saving One Who Was Dead, uh, which was screening at the Czech and Slovak Film Festival of Australia. Um, Václav, can you tell us a little bit about this film? Yeah, so uh, it, it is my third film and it, uh, it kind of evolved from a very personal experience I had when uh, my father suffered uh, a severe stroke a couple of years ago. And it was a very serious situation and his main uh, artery got blocked and it, it really looked like uh, he was going to die. The doctor really didn't have, gave, give him uh, much chance and the diagnosis was, was really fatal. And he had an operation and they had to remove uh, part of his uh, brain. Mm. And he was kept in an uh, artificial sleep for mm. a long time. And then uh, he was meant to wake up, but he, he was still in a coma and he didn't want to uh, mm. wake up. And, and uh, the doctors told us that he would stay in a lock, which means that like his body would be here and his mind somewhere not mm. connected as far. Mm. So me and my mother, we... we uh, went to the ICU every day and we started to talk to him uh, for six, seven hours every day and uh, mm. trying to bring him back, trying to find the right words. We didn't know what to tell him, what to say. Mm. Uh, we didn't want to push too much. Uh, we didn't want to, you know, sort of uh, force him. So we talked to him in, 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 in peace. We tried to talk to him in peace. And this was the base... Uh, for for the script because I kept the diary I kept the record of, of all the images that I I observed all the sounds I have heard and uh, so this kind of personal record was the was the beginning of the the script mm. and then it evolved to a little slightly different direction and it became more as a metaphor but this personal event uh, was the the starting point of the film yeah and you can you can really feel that in the film it's a very it feels very personal and um very real to the experience as a similar experience I've had myself um yeah so that leads it into your very unique and your own experience um with that kind of limbo between life and death um and I want to say you you really bring the audience along with you and, and entice us to feel that sense of longing and sadness um, in the film. How do you feel like you achieved this? Yeah, well, I before I started to make it into a project, I was, uh, uh, I hesitated because I, I thought maybe this could be too personal and I didn't want to make a film which would be too sad, mm. too tragic. So, and then I decided to, I, I, I didn't want the film to turn out to be sad. I just wanted the film to be maybe intense, but the the mother and the, and the son, they are not sad. They are mm. kind of trying to bring him back. They are ready to work, to, to fight. Mm. So the film starts to ask, uh, to answer your question, the, the film starts at the point where they already decided to, to fight, mm. to kind of work on the body, to work on the mind and try mm. to bring him back. So it, there is no scene which would you know show the first kind of uh, uh, contact with the diagnosis. This kind of you know the when when you learn something like this happened in your family, so you are kind of you know you 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 suffer and you are in pain. Mm. But I wanted to put all this into ellipse and start with the decision that they will bring him back. So mm. it was one of the uh, the, the, the decisions uh, while writing the script. So we knew that this would be like a working like on, the, mm. on the body, the tuning of an instrument mm. when, when, when you already did, you know, uh, determined to, to, to kind of stand in the way of, 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 uh, of destiny and, and, mm. and bring him. So, uh, but uh, also, I, I of course, I wanted to kind of make the film uh, physical and uh, the idea of the body being in a coma and, uh, you know, touching the body and trying to connect with the body is maybe one of the things that make make it uh, intense and make it kind of uh, uh, like, a, like a prayer because they kind mm. of pronounce kind of little prayers. And... Uh, uh, I also decided in the very early stage that I would use uh, only interior in the film and that it would kind of serve as a as a metaphor of a, of a body, of the father's mm. body. So mm. The way they wander, you know, in the corridors, it's like they would be inside of the father. Mm. So uh, 
one of the decisions was that uh, it would be a, a film where the father is kind of somewhere far away, but also he's very, very present. Mm. It's almost like it is from his point of view, mm. but he never, you know, says a word. He never opens a, oh, he opens eyes one time, but mm. uh, so this was the, this was the decision. Yeah. Yeah, and you can definitely feel that in um, the presence of the father's character. As you said, he doesn't, you know, have any dialogue or anything like that, but he's so present in the story and as well with the the relationship with the mother and the son, and you can really see the strength of those relationships and of the characters as individuals, and they, they are not giving up and they, yeah, not willing to let go to kind of give destiny what it might be trying to do. And I think what I really enjoyed um, in that was that that use, as you said, of staying inside the hospital or the clinic and and that use of repetition throughout the film, whether it be um, the mother and son interacting with the father or whether it be, you know, the walking through the corridors in between. I think it it really envelops that relationship and how you feel when you are in those situations where you are very internal yeah. to the hospital and it is very repetitive and you just kind of yeah. keep trying to do the same sort of things to get to the better of the situation yeah, so, yeah. exactly usually mm. usually what i do i start with observation so this is something i really observed i think uh, everybody who has some kind of experience in this with this situation not uh, maybe not so serious it doesn't have to be so you know radical but uh, mm. we all know this kind of hours spent in the hospital where the time kind of stretches and it kind of also it, it, it's retarded it's it's very you know very abstract suddenly the time becomes very abstract mm. and you are walking and your mind is creating these structures and uh, what would happen what will happen so mm. this is something i wanted to i wanted to kind of create and i wanted to uh show because it's it's uh it's, you know, I remember when we, we visited my father, it was like the time was so uh, uh, abstract. All of mm. a sudden, it, one hour was like one day and, and mm. one day was one hour. And, uh, and also the, the fact that we, we didn't stay in the hospital all the time. But uh, mm. uh, when we got back to, to, my, to our house, to my parents' house, because I was at my parents when it happened, uh, we were in our thoughts, you know, all the time in the hospital anyway. Mm. So... Uh, it was like our bodies were were at home, but uh, with our mind, we were there. So this is also something I wanted to express. Yeah, and yeah, and that's exactly right. It's even when you leave the situation that your mind is still present um, in what is going on there. And so did that kind of go into your choice of filming in portrait rather than landscape? Yeah, there, there were couple of reasons one of the reason was that i want to i wanted to really you know uh, portray the characters in their kind of uh, solitude you know mm. like they were really very in very narrow uh, space and a very narrow situation this was one of the reasons but also when i wanted to because the film is really based on a point of view on a subjective point of view and when i said well if i if i shoot a uh, the, the subjective point of view of the sun, I don't want to, I really want to see only a fragment. I don't want to see the, the other bed in the frame mm. and with the wide ratio, it's more like objective, you know, way of, of, of portraying things. So I, I, but I wanted to really keep in this kind of uh, 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 frame where I knew that uh, the father would be always kind of uh, horizontal and the, mm. the mother and the son would be, be you know, above uh, talking to him so this kind of uh, vertical uh, composition mm. was going to be like a, a refrain like a ritual mm. so this was also the reason but uh, there was also a very practical reason that we found a hospital a very old hospital where we shot which had a very high ceilings so i liked very much the ceiling it was almost like mm. a church mm. so i said let's make it a ver vertical film where, where like you know everything should be vertical and all the mise-en-scene would be uh, adapted for this uh, vertical ratio. So mm. even uh, when I was uh, doing my director's script, I already knew that I would you know, direct the actors in the vertical kind of uh, way of compositions that they would talk to the stairs and there would be a lot of going up and down in the elevator. So mm. it became like a new challenge, you know. Mm. And and I also wanted the, the you know, the, the kind of, the body of the film to change in the cinema as 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 would the the, the viewer like mm -hmm. something changes so the, the the ratio changes the sound changes and all of a sudden it becomes more physical 
Mm. Yeah, and you you mentioned um, with the mother and the son, obviously you worked with um, an incredible cast and crew to be able to create that scenario with um, the verticals and all the lines throughout the film. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, working with those two actors and how they were able to guess, bring this story to life? Yes, of course. They, they were they were both quite known. They are quite known and famous in the Czech and Slovak uh, environment, uh, in, the, in the industry, and they work uh, quite a lot. The uh, Wojciech Dick is more of a singer, but he also acts. And Susanna is a Slovak uh, actress, amazing actress. And you know, I I told them from the beginning, you know, this this is this is this will be very hard for you because you will mm -hmm. have a very limited space, not just the limited space in the ratio, but also limited space. Because you are standing, you know, in the ICU where you cannot express too much, you know, you, you cannot mm -hmm. uh, be loud, not just by voice, but also with your body, you know, and then you would have to express your feelings through eyes, through the gaze. Mm -hmm. And this is always the hardest thing for an, for an actor to do, of course, or an actress. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, we worked, uh, we didn't rehearse in advance, but we took a lot of takes while shooting. And because the situations were kind of repeating, so uh, we found this system of how to work. And they really wanted to what they what they brought was for me was very like a, you know liberation because they wanted to do all the scenes at once, which was great. So we didn't go like sentence by sentence, but they said mm. all the lines at once. So the fa the, the the son was talking, and all the scene he, he just said all the scenes, all the I don't know it was it, it fifteen or twenty lines. And the mother would, you know, helping would, would help him. The the actress would help him and say uh, her lines. And then the other way around. And mm -hmm. I shot this in a in a wider in, in a wider frame, in a closer, uh, you know, shot and on, on, on a very close up sh shot. So they would go repeatedly through the lines, which would kind of be like a rehearsal for us. That would really uh, give it its you know its uh, right uh, tone and its right performance. But uh, uh, of course, they went. I mean, if you if you act in a very narrow frame, you know you cannot do anything with your hands because you would cover your face, and it's really hard because usually you know the body uh, helps actors to express, but mm -hmm. they they really had to rely on their eyes, only on their eyes, on the gaze they had. It's kind of triangle gaze uh, I used. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, it was for them. It was uh, difficult, but they really worked very hard and they they gave it so much and I, I i'm i'm very happy with what they what they achieved yeah well i think that really speaks to both um their talents and also obviously their relationship they developed um with you as a director and the others other members of the cast and crew to be able to um portray such a story with as you said that limited space um both um uh, being able to be physically active and in the dialogue um could you Tell us a little bit about, um, I guess, what you want people to take away from the film. Yeah, this this really was a, a big question for me because I said, you know, why would I uh, pass this kind of experience? Is it possible to to share it? Mm. Is it possible to to you know? I wouldn't I wouldn't want to make a film about you know kind of longing and sadness and or also just about uh, this kind of you know. Because I don't like films which kind of where the, the 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 filmmaker kind of cries out or something. So I I didn't want the film to be about pain. But um, then I decided to make it as a as a kind of uh, to as a weapon or to give people uh, not just hope but also an instrument to 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 never give up and to kind of share this kind of light, you know. So I really hoped that the film would show acceptance. The kind of uh, kind of light at the end where people can even you know despite these tragical events they could feel some uh, hope or uh, some force because I remember at the, at the at the most difficult moments when the doctors would tell us these really tough and very very kind of uh, you know fatal diagnosis at the at this kind of uh, instance of of connection with the father when he was really very far. Mm -hmm. I felt some source of uh, creativity and, and also freedom. I, I don't know how to explain, but maybe when we are very close to 
death, we feel this this kind of freedom. And mm -hmm. this was very liberating, actually. Mm -hmm. I cannot say I liked it because it would sound, no, I didn't like it. I was really down. Mm -hmm. But it was something that gave me a, a, a really a, so much hope and strength. So I said, if the film could uh, just suggest this, I would be, I would be happy. Mm. No, and I think, um, no, you have portrayed that very well. And I think it would be a very, I guess, cathartic um, project to work on. And I think, I guess, the way that it's been presented, as you say, you want to show that strength and that resilience. It really shows and gives people like a camaraderie um, for those who have been in the same situation in the past or may end up in that situation in the future. It allows them to see being in a position of, I guess, fighting back. Um, so that's something I yeah. really enjoyed in the film. Yeah, I would I would maybe just add something also about the actors because <clears throat> I remember when I was uh, casting, I never make like a casting where I would invite actors for, for the camera test. I always have a coffee with uh, some mm -hmm. people that I kind of imagine before when I run the script and I know them and I meet them and we talk. And for me, it was uh, important that, uh, that Susanna Maubredi, who portrays the mother, had a similar experience with her father mm. and it didn't turn out well, but mm. she, she would kind of, she had a faith in this kind of situation. She absolutely understood uh, why she would be standing next to the father and talk, you know, because she knew it, she experienced it. This was mm. really important. Mm. And the similar thing was with uh, with Wojciech who portrays the, the son. His father uh, uh, was 93 and he, he already was kind of, he wasn't sick, but the, he was very old mm. and actually he passed on after the film where he kind of he kindly he, he kind of realized uh, and he wrote me that he now he understood he understands the the, the film you know so mm -hmm. i felt they would kind of connect with the situation this is something very important mm. you know because uh, people some people wouldn't we wouldn't, wouldn't do that some people wouldn't you know talk to uh, their loved ones, if they mm. are in a coma, people would uh, carry it with them, which is also mm. okay. I don't want to, you know, judge or something, mm. but you know, to to spend their hours and hours, it also meant to be some kind, to have some kind of kind of to be uh, not selfish, but to be uh, in a way, you know, uh, determined and uh, not to take any. Uh, 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 you know, my mother, uh, it was funny, my mother was really determined and she would really uh, refuse some of the doctor's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, instructions because mm -hmm. uh, she fights. She she, you know, they, 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 sent, they sent her home and they, mm -hmm. she would go back. So it would also mean to, you know, go against uh, these rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I've had a similar experience to that as well. Yeah. Um, and I think you can really see the determination in the, the mother's character as well, um, which I think is something um, really beautiful to see on the screen. And um, people can take, I guess, from that situation, um, different experiences as whether something they might want to envelop in the future or um, I guess even find like an inspiration in it. Oh, that's, that's great. I think this is... Uh... If the film has this kind of power, then uh, then 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 I'm 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 really fulfilled. I fulfilled my my ambition and uh, achieved uh, my goal. So yeah, that's great. Um, and how does this film fit in? I guess comparative to some of your other works. Well, I uh, this is kind of part of a very very loose trilogy that I. Um, because my two previous films were also about family, they were also about absence of a, of some, of, a, of a member of a family. So in that sense, it connects. But uh, in this film, I think I went I went further with the with the topic. I you know I've, I'm facing a subject which is quite difficult. Uh, some of the words they say are are uh, you know. Uh, in this kind of metaphysical realm, I would say, which is which was something I've never done before, but it's something I really uh, I'm interested in. This kind of mental landscape to to show uh, uh, you know a space which reflects this kind of inner state of of uh, of a character. Mm. It's almost like you know uh, we reflect our thoughts in the uh, you know on the space around us and and, and the situations around us. 
And so it's not necessarily that uh, the situations kind of uh, create us and we kind of uh, reflect that, And but maybe the situations are, are created by us and uh, they reflect our inner uh, world. So this is mm. something I would really like to follow. And, and, uh, and this is something I tried for the first time in this film. Mm. Yeah, so kind of just displaying those kind of metaphysical relationships you can have with the yeah. events that happen in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the images and the and the, the you know the the space around kind of reflects these uh, and the and the colors and the light. This is something I think the cinema can do and uh, and it's 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 its power really to 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 explore it more. I think because uh, usually what we what we connect the cinema with is, is, is a story with a character with a protagonist and antagonist. Something happens. Usually there is a conflict and the conflicts kind of. Uh, uh, reflect uh, and they kind of you know make the characters to do something to to act mm. but uh, it would be interesting to look at cinema from a different angle from this mm. kind of point of view this is something I want to explore in my future work also mm. yeah well as you mentioned um, future work can you give us any insight on any projects you might have coming up in the near future yeah, because the thing is, we also started to because I'm also a producer of of the films uh, I directed, but we also started to produce uh, films by other directors. Mm -hmm. So now we we have we actually finished two films. One is already in the editing uh, phase, and the the other one is in the development. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, finish uh, as a co-producer, we 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 made a documentary for Arte about Czechoslovak New Wave, directed by a French director. It's like archive documentary, uh, very personal and, and I think very beautiful one. And I'm working on my new film, which is uh, inspired by uh, Comenius and uh, a teaching of Comenius. Uh, it's a big uh, figure of, uh, of a, not just Czech, but European uh, history. And he's connected with uh, this kind of you know teaching methods, but he was also a philosopher and theologist and his teaching and his philosophy something that inspires me but mm -hmm. it's not going to be biopic it's going to be more of a kind of inner journey into his uh, uh, way of thinking so this is something i'm really interested in and i also have a project in portugal uh, with, the, with the portuguese producer uh, it's about a captain on a ship who is uh, uh, trapped in a, in a windless uh, in a windless situation and so these these two films uh, are just ahead of me but the Comenius project is something I I'm more involved with. Mm. Well they all sound really interesting and like they're coming from a lot of um, different perspectives and different types of storytelling um, so I guess I'm looking forward to keeping my eye out for those and hopefully there's something that we can see um, in the Casper catalogue in the coming years. I hope so. Yeah, thank you. I mean, of course, it's a uh, for uh, you know every filmmaker. It's uh, as my as my teacher and a friend Wojciech Jasny always told me. You know, for three projects that you don't make, you you make one, which is okay. Mm -hmm. So it's always a fight. You know, the financing and then so it's all ahead of me. But uh, I never give up. So I, yeah. I, I sure I'm sure uh, we will see each other again, and I'm looking forward to to come to Australia also. Yeah, that would be great. It would be great to have you um, in person at our opening night one year. Yeah, I would love to. This is it's also one of my uh, places that I've never visited before. So I would love to. I love to go and and, and learn from Australia. Yeah. So and I'm very happy that uh, Saving One Who Was Dead is is presented there. Yeah. Well, um, I'm not sure if you would have been told or not, but it was actually um, the winner of the jury's pick for the festival. Oh, wow, oh, great. Which Amazing. I don't know if I actually was allowed to tell you yet, but... Um, uh, I will keep it yeah. a secret. Pardon? I will keep it a secret. Keep uh, it so... a secret, act surprised when they tell you. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's great, great news. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so they will but... award... What, what does it mean? They will award it or, or they will award it? Or what does it mean? Or um well we have a i'm part of the australian film critics association um and we had a jury um for this festival we had to 
uh, I guess, review and um, decide between um, six of the major films that were playing at the festival and um, choose an overall winner. Oh, thank you. So it's a, such an hour, honor. Thank yeah. you. Now I have to visit. Now I have to visit. You'll have to visit. <laughs> um, and I can show you around Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, but the, of course we... Yeah, Pardon? The, the, I just, uh, the, the last thing I wanted to tell you was that uh, my father eventually woke up and he remembered every word we told him. Wow, that is really powerful. Yeah. We, we, uh, he, he could hear everything. He could create his dreams and images. And even though part of his small brain mm. uh, is missing, he's doing very well. He can oh. walk. He, and he started to study physics. And, and it really opened a new perspective. Even though the, the situation is, was very dramatic and tragic, mm. for him, it was like a new discovery. Mm. I'm so happy to hear that. Um, yeah. And I I'm, I'm really appreciate um, how open you've been and how much you've um, shared with us here as part of the conversation. And I think, yeah, that also speaks to, I guess, the way that you produce and the way that you direct your films, putting so much of yourself into them makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. And thank you for the questions because your questions uh, open me. You know, it's all, always about uh, how you ask, you know, then the conversation takes its, you know, shape and it's, it's, mm -hmm. its journey. So thank you.